Jeremy, before we start, can I just ask you yeah, uh, what's something outside of sports that has brought you joy? Ooh, I like I like you turning the tables on me as soon as I <laughs> press turn record on the The tables have turned. Wait, that, did someone ask that today? Oh, wow. Someone hasn't listened oh, to Miami Mike'd up a lot. Somebody's Jeez. not listening to Miami Mike'd up very often. It's how can Jeremy I ta- starts every interview by asking can, them something mm-hmm. outside of sports that's made that brought them joy. Can mm-hmm. I tell you something um, horrible? for the industry that we're in. You don't listen to any podcasts. <laughs> because we do like five straight hours of recordings a day and then uh-huh. it's go home and it's edited and it's constantly have headphones on and stuff like that. Like I don't listen to that many podcasts just because like my brain can't take it. Like I will sometimes just drive home in silence just to like not have voices going on in my head. Driving home in silence is serial killer behavior though. I get well, too sleepy. I get too sleepy. I can't let me, do that. Let me one up it. If I'm not driving home in silence or I'm not talking on the phone, I'm having conversations with myself. Mm. So you can just add to my body count of serial killer. That's behavior. even worse. Yeah, you yeah. did. I thought you were going to make it better and that made it so much worse. No, no, definitely <laughs> um, not. Well, all right. I guess I'd like to start there. Um, so I'm going to just say that that's where we started the podcast. Uh, hey, everybody. <laughs> This is Miami Mic'd Up. It's obviously a bit of a different format today. Um, I'm Billy Jeremy and I just Taché. waved. Billy and I just waved at the camera, by the way. And that right there is the vibe we're going to have today. <laughs> it's Chris Cody and Billy Gill joining me on this episode of Miami Mic'd Up. Super excited to have them here. We're going to talk uh, Marlins baseball today because uh, the two of them watch as much Marlins baseball as just about anybody I know. Um, I believe they know as much about baseball as just about anybody I know, but often aren't put in the position to actually analyze this team. Uh, and so what I want to do today is bring up a few different topics about this year's Miami Marlins and uh, the Marlins of yesteryear and let Chris and Billy get mm. as heady as they want with it or also just be fans because the reality is, is all three of us sitting here are Marlins fans excited about the wild card race. Um, and presently, as we're recording this on Thursday afternoon, the Marlins are playing against the Brewers, and we'll see how that goes as this conversation goes along. But Marlins are in the thick of it, um, sitting either just a half game, <clears throat> excuse me, a half game or a game it's and a half. Yeah, it is a fine. I'm going to leave it in there just because it's a fine. Um, <laughs> half game, game and a half, right in there in the wild card race. Um, and it's been a really fun season. So before we get into all the baseball, Chris predicted it. And Chris, we'll start with you as a result. I've got to ask you. What is something recently oh, wow. outside of work that has brought you joy? Bowling. <laughs> I, I started a bowling team. I'm the leader of it. I have to, you know, get all my t- make sure my roster's right every Wednesday. Um, I'm not drinking on Wednesdays because I have to work on Thursdays. So it makes bowling oh. a little less fun because in the past I've drank a lot at bowling and that makes it fun. But I'm not drinking during bowling, so a little less fun. But bowling has brought me joy. You're taking the bowling GM job very seriously. You're now the GM of, or you're an owner of a highlight team. Yeah. You're the GM of a of a bowling team. How much more are you looking to diversify your portfolio? You know, once me and you get a high school baseball program that we can coach, then that will be the, I'll be done there. That'll be Putting good. that out, yeah. Chris and I should be coaching a high school baseball team. Mm-hmm. Um, reality show. Making a, a reality show out of it. That's something Wait. I wanted to pitch for quite a long yeah. time. What? You heard it. I you think, it. yeah, and Billy, you can join the staff. No, yeah. thank you. I first think Chris base, Cody. We need a first base coach. We need a first base. How's your, how's your back? Wow. First base coach is like the worst of the coaches. Yeah, that was it's really the just least an important. I, was trying to, I didn't demotion. want to put a, what are you, I mean, you want to be the pitching coach? That's Jeremy's job already. Right, like, right. you know, like. I, well, what are you, you're the head coach? I mean, you know, I mean, Billy, come on. I'm coaching third, baby. Okay, well, For those of you the... only listening to this, uh, we've got Chris giving signs. Actually, pretty smooth. It's great. What's the indicator? Um, so we've got uh, Chris Cody and his bowling league. Billy, what's something recently outside of work that's brought you joy? He has a child? I, think it, I think it's cute that you say outside of work as though work brings me a ton of joy at the moment. <laughs> you know what it is? I think I'm uh, I'm used to I'm used to speaking uh, mostly with important people athletes yeah. who yeah. you know we're like all supposed to think that they really enjoy uh the work that they do consistently um and also oftentimes and i don't know if you know this billy but a lot of people think that what we do is pretty glamorous um yeah. yes I, they don't know what it is that we do but that's what they think if only they knew that right now i'm wearing headphones that my two-year-old daughter broke and are being yes. held together with electrical tape 
<laughs> they know how glamorous this life is. If you notice, you see there's like a bump here that goes out. That's where the electrical tape is failing me and is no longer working. Yeah, it looks great. How long? Thank do you. you. We, how long do you think we can go, Jeremy, without actually talking any Marlins or answering no, his been, question? It would have been better if we just did it, and then that was the podcast. <laughs> yeah, Billy Joy, what's brought you joy? Yeah, what's what's brought you joy, Billy? Um, what's brought me joy is well, here's here's something that's br- brought me joy. joy. Do you do joy? Not. A lot. I mean, I don't. I don't know how to answer that question. Do I do joy? Yeah. Like I like. I like being happy. You know. When's the last time you said we? You know what's funny about that question <laughs> is that so yesterday I was outside and I was pushing my daughter on a swing, oh, and she every time it. she was going forward, she'd say we. And I yeah. and it's funny that you say it, but I was thinking like, I wonder why it is that we like as a sign of joy, just scream we, because it's incredible. Yes. Yeah, it is. Is she she at the age where she's in the kid one still? Like, which kid are we talking here? Or is your older one holding herself on the big kid? She's holding herself. So we got her, or I guess Santa Claus got her, not we, we didn't get her anything. Santa Claus got her a swing set for Christmas, and we had to put it together, which was the confusion when I said the we. We had to put it together because Santa just left a bunch of boxes and then we had to put it together. So anyways, Santa got her a swing set that we had to put together. And Santa brought one of the little bucket seats that's meant for like infant, toddlers, whatever. And that seat lasted about two weeks before my daughter decided that she was going to be a brave little girl and sit on the one that she's holding. And she's been doing that since. And uh, I was kind of hoping Santa kept the receipt because we didn't need that swing anymore. And I learned that swing seats, when I looked up the price, were expensive. Sweet. So thank you to Santa for that. Uh, but yeah, she's on the, the regular swing set now. It's a little dangerous at first. You're like, hold on. You have to like hit, hit that reminder like every minute, like, hold on. So Let it's like, go. it's weird because she like really enjoys like going high and fast and like, I try not to push too hard and my wife will tell me like you're pushing too hard, whatever. And then added to the chaos, sometimes my dog's running around. So then I have to like grab her while she's there because the dogs will like run right in front of her. And I don't want her to hit the dog and break a leg or kick the dog and break the dog's leg. And it's like, oh, my life's a bit chaotic at the moment. I have two dogs. Yeah, I have like two it. kids. It's just a lot. And, you know, work responsibilities. There's just a lot going on. Plus Marlins baseball, you know. Right, wild Marlins card baseball. race, am I right? Yeah, the wild card race. It's funny. I'm going to keep it sidetracked for just a moment um, yeah. because you brought up Santa Claus. And so um, for those of you with children, skip ahead for the next 60 seconds. Um, but why my spoiler alert? Yeah. Um, I have a question. I'm glad we like told people like, hey, we're going to get real. Yeah. here because I actually I have, have children. Should I skip ahead? I know you're question. good. I have a question oh. about how we handle this whole Santa. Yeah, so, all right, so if the children are listening, please stop listening at this well, moment. Um, hopefully you already like have. This. Yeah, like please, this at, at this point. Um, so my... <laughs> my Chris, just scream at curse word now. My nephew um, has a teacher who has told all of the kids that there is a desk fairy. Oh, God. Ooh. I thought, and I thought no, you were about to not, say he... No, 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 okay. that has told all of the kids that there is a desk fairy. And that if they keep their desks clean, the desk fairy will come by and give them gifts. Wow. And I love that. The, great idea. The problem is, is that when you don't put it into practice, it forces a kid to question everything. Mm. So there was a promise of the desk fairy. This kid's seven years old. And he was saying to his grandma, my, my mother-in-law, hey, the desk fairy hasn't come by, even though our desks have been really clean. And you know what? I don't think the tooth fairy is real either. Oh. I think that's just my mom and dad putting money when I have a tooth, which is interesting because I don't really know how Santa gets down the chimney, but Santa has to be real. But like Santa's going to get ru- this kid's going into an existential crisis because mm-hmm. of this teacher not fulfilling their duties of the desk fairy. And I don't think that that teacher realizes quite what they've probably done to these the teacher should be executed it yeah, seems I like so you're, it seems like he was on to something though it seems like he he already was a little skeptical and this is he's just like kind putting of like, it together it yeah. is interesting that this is like the final nail on the coffin of like all right this is gonna kill the tooth fairy what was your I, question my dilemma is my mom wants presents at her house to be from santa and for me 
Santa gifts are from at home, and then mm. when we go to grandparents' house, those are just gifts. Like, what is Santa going to go to six houses for her and drop presents? Like, for me, the way it always worked is Santa delivers presents to our house, Get and then when you go to grandparents, you tell what you got from Santa, but the stuff coming from those houses is not from Santa. Those are from the grandparents. My parents are just confusing it all by, like, having Santa gifts at their house. It's just weird. We're I in a similar spot. We're in a yeah. similar spot. And then there's a question of wrapping paper, not yes. wrapping paper, things like that. And and by the way, um, I don't do you have nieces and nephews yet or no? Well, I have one niece, but yeah, little. OK, so what ends up happening is everyone needs to get on the same page. Yeah. Like everyone in the family, if the children are all growing up together, all of the of all of the adults need to get on the same Big page time. and have the same practice because if not, then things start falling apart yeah. very quickly. Mm -hmm. And the you know thing is, be... is like you're if you you have the eldest, right? Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah my daughter. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So you're you're in like the power position yes. right now because mm -hmm. you had a head start and you kind of get to make the rules for that generation mm -hmm. and then or at least strongly suggest the rules for that generation because it's like, well, we did. Blah, blah, blah. And then, like, it has to take a very bold person to say, we're changing it up entirely. Yeah. And usually they won't. They'll just follow along with how the original people did it. So, like, you're in a great spot. Yeah. We were not, we do not have the oldest girls in the family. So, like, we're kind of, we have it in, like, our direct family. But, like, I they, they have little cousins who are, like, five years old, six years old. So, like, now we kind of have to follow the lead and the precedent that's been set. And I don't, I'm, I'm still adjusting to it. Well, the Christmas gift for all of us would be a Marlins postseason yeah. birth. And that's what I we're didn't here have, to talk about is Marlins I, baseball. I didn't have Santa on my bingo card today. Yeah. No, neither I did I. I didn't know where we were going to go, but I, I certainly <laughs> didn't think it was going to end up with Santa Claus before talking about Luis Arias. I, I, I never discussed that. joy either, Chris. I don't know if you oh caught Oh my that. God, you oh, avoided yeah. that too. Well, I, if it helps, <laughs> I avoided the conversation off the top by mm. just deflecting and saying that you didn't listen to the show. I have a question. What brings you sadness, Jeremy? Mm -hmm. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Not, that's dark. That, you seem like a joyful guy, you know? I think yeah. that's maybe that's the next evolution of the show. I've been working with Dan me. a lot, you know? Yeah, you had just the grief eating is <laughs> had to start somewhere. Uh, all right, let's let's do this. Let's talk about yeah. the Marlins um, because this has been a fun season. We've all been talking about it uh, in the studio throughout the year, how much fun it's been really to watch this team um, as opposed to a number of seasons past. And I know obviously there's been, you know, been some ups and downs. Um, particularly, you know, over the last couple of months, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. But I kind of just wanted to get your guys' thoughts on this season so far and how it's compared uh, to years past for you as someone watching the team and, and sort of around them. So, you know, Chris, if you want to start. I was skeptical of this team. I think, like, it was early on in the season, I was just like, guys, this offense has not improved. I know we have the pitching to to be something. But I've been honestly surprised. Obviously, Luis Saraz has been a great addition mm -hmm. um and like you said it's been it's been nice we were buyers how many times in our in the marlins history have they been buyers right well and and buyers where you actually believe in the fact that they could make a run like yeah. they've been buyers in years past where the buying hasn't necessarily worked out you know they traded uh what did they trade for they traded for starling Marte at, a, at the deadline in yeah. 20 yeah. 20 ironically um yeah, in, yeah. in a shortened season but well even and then when you pick that and choose one your spots it's like it's really specific choices to buy and and being a buyer in this position like you said for the long term as well for a team that you believe is going to make the playoffs but also in buying a guy like jake berger who's going to be here for the long term well that one actually worked out the starling Marte one right because yeah, they made the postseason i mean everyone will say and it was a shortened season because and then he in first game immediately yep. breaks his hand and then you know, you're going to go up against, they sweep the Cubs, you're going to go up against the Braves, and that is going to be a difficult series as it is. But you're going to it through it with your best hitter injured. So, yep. yeah, this year was interesting because it was like, it was very aggressive buying. It wasn't just like adding a piece. It was mm -hmm. like, these are multiple holes that we're trying to fill. And as the days were playing out, you saw kind of that Kim Ang had a plan that she was executing. And one trade 
almost led into the following trade and then into the following trade. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of cool to see that there was a plan and that it was like a stack of dominoes falling into place. Um, And like, you're right. They have traded for controllable assets. I think in Bell, everyone just assumed he's going to opt in. And now it's almost like he's been playing so well that you're wondering, is he going to opt in? out because he may not make more next year on a one-year deal but he could get a two or three-year deal where it's worth it to make slightly less next year with guaranteed money so like that one's been interesting where it's almost like be a little less successful if you can while also being successful enough to try (laughs) to get the marlins in the postseason which is like a really strange thing to say and for what it's worth by the way before you go chris it It's not impossible that Josh Bell could opt out and then sign a longer-term deal down here in Miami. Obviously, the Marlins value him in terms of the fact that they've traded for him, and he's been such a huge part of this run toward the postseason that you know he's part of their future plans. They hope it's for at least next year with an opt-in, but if he were to opt out, I wouldn't put it past them to try to sign him so long as you know it's the same front office in place. Kim Ang has to obviously resign herself, but that that's a further conversation. Has Kim Ang flim- flipped the narrative is the question I want to ask because l- let's be real, at the beginning of the season, there were questions. We were like, there was people, like she had had a couple years and people mm-hmm. were... You know, I, I don't know. Like, it, the jury was still out, let's say that. But I do think that, I don't know whether it's just the team's hot start, the, the moves she made, mm-hmm. the Pablo Lopez for loser eyes. I mean, that's just a chef's kiss mm-hmm. of a deal. Um, that worked, she, out. That she worked out well for everyone. Teams. Yeah. yeah. Has he been good? He's, yeah, he's Oh, yeah, he's been great. He's okay. been great. And, and almost to the point where you're like, man. Our pitch, our, we could have had that pitching depth. Well, we funny traded when away. At, when you look at Pablo and Zach Gallen. Uh, well, I mean. She's still <laughs> that's the one we on want back, one. right? Cool. Yeah. Well, th- those are those are weightier conversations than simply that having those guys in the rotation. But it, it's a good point that you make, Chris, which is that you know this front office. Um, look, after last season went the way that it did, and it was bad. You had the struggles of Ivisayo Garcia and Jorge Soler, who then got yes. hurt, right? And now. Look, Jorge Soler, turns out that was a tremendous signing. If he had not been injured last year, he would have been on pace for 30 homers. And now this season has really carried the Marlins offense along with Luis Arias until they got to this point. Another one playing too well. A little less well, Jorge, <laughs> please. Because now yeah, he's well, probably going to be gone. Because he's well, going to sign a big deal, potentially, with well, another team. Thought. Or with the Marlins, yeah. He's gone. But another great point, right? Some of these guys who have these opt-outs... Being able to opt out is a big deal, but what's nice for the Marlins going forward is there's a bit of a core in a way that there hasn't been in years past. You know that whether whether healthy or not, you have Jazz Chisholm Jr., who in terms of production has been everything you actually hope for. If you look at his numbers over his last 120 games, I believe he has something like 26 or 27 homers, hitting like 270, stealing a bunch of bases. The production's there. It's just about whether or not he's on the field. But then you have Luis Arias and Jake Berger, and now these corner outfielders and Sanchez and De La Cruz who have been a surprise. Are there any guys in particular for you guys this season that stand out as like, man, it's been really fun for me to watch that player, whether it's because, hey, I really like the way he plays and it's been, you know, a joy to watch that, or hey, they've burst onto the scene in a way that I didn't anticipate. I think it's I, okay. So going back to the trade thing just for a second, yeah, I think please. that that one of the telling things this season that was exciting too. In previous years, you would have traded Jorge Soler, knowing that there is that You're possibility so right. of losing him. And it was almost like man, like you could get something for him, but we can't afford to trade for him. Because what happened was with this season in particular is I think this team surprised a lot of people, right? There were some people believe that believed in them and thought like, oh, you know, this will definitely be a better year than last year. But I don't think anyone thought that they would be in the position that they're even presently in right now where we're in mid-September and they're still, what, half a game out of a playoff spot. And they've been in it the entire year where they almost forced the hand of management where it's like, you you need to try to go get pieces. You can't yep. just dump on this team because at the time, if you remember when they were, you know, right up at 14 games over 500 headed into the break, like the fans were coming out. There were ah. great couch. There was an energy that was feeding off of, you know, other successes with the Panthers and the heat. Like this season has been an exciting season to watch. So like to answer your one question, has there been one player that's been the most exciting to watch? 
it's it's weird because there's been a lot of players that yeah. like have different bursts that it's like, man, I'm really high on Bell right now. Oh, Jazz, when he's healthy, brings like something that we haven't seen for this team in a long time. Luis Arias, you know, when he was flirting with 400, now he's fallen off a little bit to the point that I'm almost worried. Are we going to hang on to the batting title here? That's yeah, a story right? for another day. That's crazy. That would That's be insane. Crazy. That would Jacob, be insane. Jacob Stalling is my most exciting player. That is a lie. You're lying through your teeth. <laughs> I was trying to find the most boring player. Billy, I have a question for you, though. Whoa, you have, that's you, unnecessary. You, what? You have been the biggest skeptic of Donnie baseball back in the day. Yeah, not I was Donnie, right. The, look at him. He's out of here, and look what's going on. Not Donnie football. Not to be confused with Donnie football. Yeah, Donnie don't, baseball. don't forget. Oh, you missed that today, Billy. Wait, yeah. I have to update you on this. This is an yeah. important sidetrack, yes. and it's important that everyone in this audience uh, that we yes. get here knows. Um, do you know what Tua Tagovailoa's middle name is? It is Spoiler Donnie. alert. It's yeah. Donnie. <laughs> So he's Donnie football. Donnie now? football. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, that's that's the that's the brilliance that I brought to the show on on Thursday. It's a great nugget. It's what I'm going to call him going. Forward. I'm calling him Donnie football. I don't know what else to tell you, Billy. Uh, what I'm going to ask is, did Skip? It's a good time Skip, to be a Don. Has Skip passed the test for you? Are you have you been critical of him this year? How do you feel about Skip's management? You're a big. You don't love any pitcher to ever get taken out. So you are you want to drive every pitcher into the ground? Correct. So how, how has Skip? And been? I hate. I hate most managers because they're the easiest one to blame when things are going wrong, especially right. when they mismanage the bullpen. Uh -huh. I've been pleasantly surprised by Skip, right? Because he comes into it, and this is his first job as a, as a manager. Obviously, he's worked on coaching staffs in the past. But as a first-year manager, you kind of figure out, like, or you, you're kind of a bit patient. You don't know what to expect, right? You think this person will have their kind of rookie mistakes. And first see, first half of the season, everything skip was doing seemed to be working out yeah. it was going great now since then there have been some decisions that people can go back and question and that comes kind of with the territory of being mm -hmm. a first year manager so i've been uh pleasantly surprised by the way skip has handled the rotation how he's made adjustments just generally how he's managed the team in his first season as a as a manager how chiseled he is Oh he man, he's jacked. so jacked. Yeah, he is so crazy. jacked. Yeah, it's pretty unbelievable. Yeah. He um it, it's fun because what came with Skip Schumacher was also a change in style of play for this team. Mm -hmm. Right? You saw a team that that last year, gosh, the offensive approach was was rough to to watch at the very least. And now Brant Brown alongside Skip Schumacher, they they've brought sort of a new approach along with Luis Reyes, right? This is a team that that basically just tries to get on base singles and doubles in the gaps trying to move gap to gap how much fun has it been for you guys to watch a team that in some ways is reminiscent of old marlins teams like to me this this in some ways reminds me of that old 03 team and the lineup you put together obviously not as potent as that world series team was offensively but that same style of we're just going to do a lot of things to score runs rather than just rely on the long ball I think Brent Brown and Mel Stoudemire Jr. don't get as much credit as it's they unbelievable. should. They really because should. they they really seem to be in the top hitting and pitching coaches in baseball. Mm -hmm. And that is, again, kudos to Skip for bringing people in, for holding over people from previous staffs that he sees are the right people to get the most out of the players. Because... Mm -hmm. You've been seeing things out of the hitters that you haven't seen in previous seasons. And Mel Sotomayor Jr. obviously was there to help Sandy win his Cy Young. But you have people like Yuri Perez who are coming up as a rookie and you see how he's been doing this season. Obviously, when he came back from, you know, being sent down, there was a little bit of a rush. Pat's there. But you definitely see potential in him there. He's come back. He's bounced back, even yep. though right now the you know, Marlins are losing 4-2. <laughs> but that's not what we're talking about. But yeah, like the coaching staff has been great. It's exciting style of baseball. I do wish that they would try to be a little more aggressive on the yep. base paths because they definitely have speed, um, especially when you have someone like Garrett Hampson there where you could just kind of every yeah. eighth or ninth inning, you can kind of just put him in there to pinch run if you're down to run. And you know that he's going to take second. He could potentially take third depending on the situation. Uh, but yeah. Like, I hope moving forward, they're a little more aggressive because league wide, you see stolen base numbers are up and it's, mm -hmm. you know, credit to both the pitch clock and the fact that the bases are bigger. So the success rate in stolen bases have gone way up. So that's one thing that they haven't, I don't think, fully taken advantage of. Um, and and also, you know, in someone like Jazz, who has the ability to steal so many bases, you hope that, you know, maybe next year because 
you see sometimes later in the games, he's trying to, you know, add on to the home run count a little bit. So you hope that maybe we could scale that back a little yeah. bit, like raise the on-base percentage, steal some bases, and realize that there's value in just being on base. Because the way that this team is constructed and the fact that it's basically a faster team and it's a team that, I don't want to say it's a singles team, but it's a team that would benefit from having people on base that they could either move over or bring in if Mm -hmm. you don't have one of the big bats up at the plate. Get them over, get them in. With Jazz, it it is interesting to see what his approach is and how it's evolved throughout the year. Uh, Because this last stretch of a few weeks before he got hurt, you could see literally you could physically see in his approach he sort of shortened things up a little bit and was yeah, his stance a little changed. bit more yep his stance changed and his approach sort of changed to where you could see he was a little more focused on you know line drives gap to gap and he happens to be one of those athletic freaks that despite not a tremendous build he's gonna just run into some home runs because he, he hit a he ball at is, 580 it's feet amazing. that's not so, the number but that's the number right but even right just so with that shortened down approach he's still gonna hit for power and I appreciate the fact that Brant Brown and company have sort of shown him that and in the time he was out, were able to work with him on that approach. You guys just mentioned a few minutes ago in passing 03 and it, it, I've reached a point in my life where the 03 Marlins season makes me sad because I realize that with, as I get older, you know, the passion for sports changes and it's just never going to be as never gonna fun. Be that. I like put like just put yourself in 03 junior year just got my license I finally have some freedom my parents are letting me go to as many games as like me and my buddy just hopping in the car going to like I I swear to God I went to 60 games that year I'm telling you I'm probably make I'm probably exaggerating a little bit seems like a lot I'm telling you dude every day especially late in the year we were there through August September uh, all the games literally Mm -hmm. every day fish tank four dollar tickets go sit behind the first base dugout like money in the bank go get those the 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 chips remember the chips at old pro player stadium i actually do the thick ones remember the like the like they were like potato like they're like homemade potato like potato skin they would sometimes dangle and you get like Uh the accordion chip oh i can just sing back those i'd get an arepa and eat like two (laughs) bites of it of it and then throw it away because it's one of those things you can't eat an entire thing of you Mm -hmm. want it like the first three or four bites is amazing but it's just well and especially i'm I'm rambling now but no but it's the fourth inning and it's 2 12 p.m on a sunday afternoon and it's a thousand degrees outside and it's like all right i only need a few few bites of this but it's great and then you could have one of those what were the the frozen lemonade icy pints the frozen lemon chills yeah Yeah, oh the lemon chill you got it that and then the guy with the guy with the the peanuts with the tennis ball uh-huh the guy with the yeah nose, the yeah that would throw you the he'd i would buy peanuts ball. just to play catch with the tennis ball like i didn't uh-huh. even want peanuts i like that and i was just like <laughs> i want to i want to uh, here go give me put the twin little twinkie in there i put too much money in there just so he throws it back with change so Ooh, it's like i get just if you put too much money to in there you get the extra throw in man that's, that's such a specific strategy but i'm glad i'm glad because normally i worry that when we talk about these really niche things that we're not speaking to an audience but whatever that audience is it's right here listening to this podcast like anybody listening to this i'll never forget charlie manuel tossing me a ball before an 03 playoff game oh i've got it in my bedroom i believe i could i need to find that actually i think it might be it's not in my bedroom i think it's Mm -hmm. like in a clot in a big box that i have wait a minute charlie manuel wasn't he the manager of the manager of the phillies oh wait no he was not before play no no no, not charlie manuel he never forgot it though not charlie manuel i i said the wrong name yes Man, the Marlins had a bench coach. Am I thinking of 97? I might be thinking of 97. The Marlins bench coach, which, you know what? I just confused eras. 03, I definitely was all always there, but the ball I think I got was 97. How, I need to look up. Who was Jim Leland's Chris, bench coach? 97. I'm uh, 36, I think. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if it's possible that your junior year would have been 97. I don't see no, that No, 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 03. No, no, no. no. My junior Jesus. year, when I was in these experiences. Look, I'm only confusing the, the Jerry ball. Jerry Manuel. No, no, no. It's Jerry like, it, Manuel. Is it Jerry Manuel? That, That's, I got yes, a ball Jerry from Manuel. the coach. That was Jerry different. Manuel. That wasn't an 03. I'm sorry. That's the only thing I brought to 03 that wasn't supposed to be there was that ball I got from Jerry Manuel. Yeah, Jerry, Jerry Manuel. Manuel. Yep, Good times. 97. Bench coach. What's he up to? Um, let's Nick find name out. the sage. <laughs> he like I've really brought us to a stop here. He... That's fine. He's was a Mets manager. Nowhere. He's 69 years old. All right. Anyways, moving on. 
That 2003 team for me, no, but truly that 2003 team for me um, is incredibly nostalgic because that's like, that's my first favorite team. I was too young for 97. I was two years old in 97 and I, <laughs> I don't remember that team just truthfully. I was uh, I've seen it all through highlights, but the 2003 team, like, I mean, I, I knew too much about them and yeah. I was eight years old. I was in third grade and was so obsessed with everything about them the call-ups during the summer of you get d-train and then you get miguel cabrera and you know they're superstars and they're 20 years old and you know for me and i've i've told this story on this podcast and elsewhere a bunch of times but it's i have i still have the 2003 world series documentary dvd Love and there's, it. A, there's a portion of it where juan pierre goes to the yankee stadium infield Oh, the ball rolling balls down the third baseline. He used to um, do that at every park, right? I, I believe would do it, he would do it at every ballpark. I just built a bunch of water all over my house, but it's fine. Are you okay? Uh, yeah, all over the whole house. Wow. Well, yeah, little house, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> see, see. Jerry yeah, Manuel, by the way, was the bench coach for Team USA during the 2023 World Baseball Classic. Wow. So, Who knew? Wow. Yeah. How about that? He was probably he was he was in Miami. He was there. Yeah. Uh, in '97, he tossed me a ball. That's what it was. Sorry. <laughs> so it was. 26 years ago. Mm -hmm. Great. Good math by me. Uh, anywho, I was going to talk to you guys about your favorite Marlins memories, but I feel like we I just gave there. you mine. We've I just gotten gave you there. Mine. Billy, Charlie Manuel. Never Billy, forget. Do you have a particular <laughs> Marlins memory that stands out? Or for that matter, like how and when did you fall in love with this team and with baseball? Oh, I was lucky. So like the Marlins started when I was a kid. So my parents took me to the first Marlins game ever. We go every year to opening dates together as a family so like we've been there since day one which is like an incredible opportunity that like obviously chris had it too mm -hmm. uh but not many people get a chance to right. kind of grow up with a franchise as they grow up down here it's been different though because people could have done that with the heat as well i did yeah. not do that with the heat and the panthers. but yeah and the panthers too now that i mention it and i guess it, like inner miami is one that you How could do growing up yeah it's had it's, a lot of it's kind teams, of huh a lot of new teams that you can grow up with. I guess it wasn't as unique. Never mind. Forget it was it. just the Dolphins down here. But that that's actually but that's actually to the point, right? Where it's interesting that it, w it was sort of Dolphins country. And over the years, we've seen that mm -hmm. fan base, a bunch of Dolphins fans that have their other team that they're also a fan of for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's accurate to say. Uh, just because yeah. generationally, the, the the one of the only teams that's had generations of fans at this point is the Miami Dolphins. But going back to Billy, and yes. some of your favorite memories there. You were growing up as a Marlins fan. So so is it just simply you got to go to opening day every year with your family? Like, are those the things that you kind of celebrate? Is that there? not good enough for you, Jeremy? No, it was good. I was just <laughs> what do you want my answer to be, Jeremy? I'll say trying, whatever you want. Hold on a second. I was just trying to make sure you got everything out because well, you got you're gonna interrupted give me by the you're rude happy. Chris Cody. You're happy, Billy, about your going with your family. That's All right, we're going to make a Marlins. We're going to do a Marlins Mount Rushmore. That's what we're going to do. We're gonna, you know what I had? I don't even want to talk to you guys know, about the rest of the things I had. I didn't say anything. Chris is the one that interrupted me. You know what I had? I had back in the old stadium. It was called Billy the Marlins Birthday Bash. I did where you would go. You did? That's awesome. Right. Yeah, so I had Billy's birthday bash, and then they put your name on the scoreboard, which was fun. Didn't and I have that back. picture. Yeah. Oh, God. It's so it rained exciting. The entire game that was my no. birthday bash. Yeah. I don't think it rained for mine, but I did it one year. Oh, man, it was so fun to see your name on the scoreboard and oh. have all your friends go. My parents rented a 15-passenger van so that all oh. me and my friends could go together in the same like little van up to the thing. Oh, my God. Good Family times. was there. Friends were there. It was what a good time. Great time that. had by all. Ironically, I did that in 2003. It was my eighth birthday, and I went to go see the Marlins play against the then reigning World Series champion, Los, or was it Los Angeles Angels or Anaheim Angels at the time? Might have been the Anaheim Angels. <laughs> um, I I don't know, but yeah, <laughs> it was it was it was it was the Angels 20 years ago, and they were. Uh, it was really fun. I I really had the best time. It was um. I also went my, I think my third birthday, I went to go see Mark McGuire. My fourth birthday, I went to go see Sammy Sosa. So it made me feel pretty wow. special. Wow. Um, against the Marlins. Look at you. Nonetheless, nonetheless. Did you, go the, the, did you go to the one. games of the home run chase? Uh, no, I, that was what got me into baseball. Was that 98 yeah. home run chase? Like that's my first baseball memory. Those are still two of my favorite baseball players of all time are Mark McGuire Wasn't and Sammy Griffey's? Sosa. 
wasn't one of Griffey's major home runs at our park with the Griffey Reds? Griffey hit his, hit his 600th. 500th or 600th? 600th. Yeah, I had foot 600. surgery the day before. We don't need to so, do this again. Oh, so I hated it. Go. Okay. I went, for, I went to, it was a four game series. I went three of the four games. Oh. Fourth game, I had foot surgery. It was a day game. That's the day that he did it. I, I was mad at my doctor that did the foot surgery. I was bleeding through my cast at home watching it. I asked the doctor on the phone if I could go to the game while I was drugged up. He said, absolutely not. And then he hit the home run. And my parents called the doctor back and they're like, ah, he's bleeding through his cast. Is this bad? And the doctor's like, well, he may have moved. Like, it should heal. If it gets really bad, like, let me know. Like, we can, you know, redo it. And maybe he tore a stitch or something like that and i was like on all of the medicine that they gave me from the surgery because it's an outpatient surgery and i remember like give me the phone <laughs> and i was like doctor he hit his things on the home run. i told you this was gonna happen to me wow. it was all oh the game God. except this one i knew it was gonna happen was so, so the so ichiro mad. thing that's happened amazing. to you before the show like that that's what happened to you with ichiro's final don't get me started on ichiro because that is not something that i have get let go yet did you Even end up I... being there for miguel cabrera you were yeah. i was yes okay. and that was one of that was i i turned to my wife and i told her and that you know, was a very cool experience, but also one of the worst decisions I've made as a parent was the decision to, on a whim, book a flight for me and my wife and my daughter to go up to Detroit to try to see Miguel Cabrera get his three. It was an adventure. We So he gets three hits the night before. And because of the fact that I miss Ichiro, I'm like, I'm not going to miss Miguel Cabrera. I need to see it. So I, I booked the flight. I go, we fly up and I'm like, I'm, I'm going to do it. And I was like, man, this is going to be expensive. This is going to be ridiculous. Right. And what ended up happening was a sponsor then said, Hey, you know what? We'll pay for you to go. And I had already booked the flight and I had already done those things. And I'm like, wow, that's so great. Thank you so much. I would love that. Let me go ahead and do that. So I already had done it. And then I basically got like reimbursed, which is like super Amazing. cool. It was right. super cool. So we fly up. It's a day game, of course, which adds to the complications where they close all of the, the gates except one gate at the airport. I'm like, we're going to miss this flight. The flight was first thing in the morning. It was a whole thing. We get to the gate and they're like, where's the baby's ticket? I'm like, no, no, no. The baby's 10 months old. They don't need a ticket. They're like, yeah, but you need to add the baby to a ticket. And of course, it's like everything. It's the absolute last gate of the airport so we're running after we finally get through then we get there and it's like a portion of the airport i didn't even know existed that you have to go outside walk on the ground and walk on like ladders to get up Your into the plane is a sitcom a ladder i didn't at, well like one of those like outdoor like <laughs> right, step right. things to go yeah so i didn't know that that even existed at miami international airport but it did and then we get there and I'm like uh this baby's not a thing and i'm like Leave the baby because I'm not missing another one. So luckily they were able to add the baby to the ticket because obviously I wouldn't be able to leave the baby. So then we get there and we have the car reservation. And then it's like we have an hour to get from the airport to the game. And with my luck, like Cabrera was hitting like third or fourth. So I'm like, he's going to hit in the first inning. I have like zero wiggle room here, right? Mm -hmm. So we finally, we rent a car. We get a car seat. We do all this stuff. Then we're driving around. We can't find parking. And then it was like one of those magic tricks that happens. I don't know if this has happened to you at Heat Games because it happens at Heat Games all the time. Uh -huh. We're like, great. I found a parking lot that I can park in, right? So I go into one and they're like, oh, keep going. And then they send you out of that lot yep. into yep. another lot. Yep. They did that to me four lots. I swear to God. Four lots. They had me drive in and out to different lots. And then what happened was they sent me back to other lots that then filled up. And they're like, oh, we don't have. We're going to give you a refund. I'm like, no, you're not. You're going to find me a spot because this game started already. And I have six minutes basically to get into the stadium and into my seat for, for this at bat. And then what happens? He goes like 0 for 3, comes up in the bottom of the eighth inning. Aaron Boone decides to intentionally oh, walk right, him. And right. I'm like, this guy, like, we're going to have issues. Like, we have beef. <laughs> and I was holding my daughter in one hand, and I'm screaming. It's like, boo, boo, you Teach stink. Like, Teach all these young. things. I wasn't saying you stink. I was saying you, you know, another word mm, for stink wow. that people say. And I was like, <laughs> boo, boo. I was so loud. The whole stadium was so loud. And then my wife is like tapping on the shoulder. She said, look, look, look. And I looked down at my daughter is in tears, crying, horrible. Ah! She's, <laughs> she's freaking out she's because of all too. the noise. She, does, she doesn't like it. 
Yeah, she, she like hated Aaron, Aaron Boone that day. Yeah. It had nothing to do with the fact that I was screaming like a crazy person <laughs> because I then also realized at that point, I am now adding a day onto this trip. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know when this trip is going to end. So then I have to go on and, you know, go on to like game time or a ticketing app, one of those. And I go on and I then have to get tickets for the next day. So I get tickets for the next day. And then that day gets rained out. So then I'm like, well, now what do I do? So then I have to get tickets for the next day, which is a double header, but you can't use the same tickets as the previous day for the double header. <laughs> so then I, I like, so now this goes from just a Thursday to a Thursday, Friday, Friday's rained out Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I had to then change my flight because I had booked it for Saturday just in case I had to stay Friday. It's be safe. The rain out screwed that up. I have to change the flight on Sunday. So then I have to come back on Sunday and I'm like, there's a double header. He has to get one hit in eight at bats unless they decide not to play him, something like that, right? So then Sunday comes, gets a hit the first at bat, and I tell my wife, we're not going to the second game. Like, we're not going to the second game. We need to just enjoy Detroit and get the heck out of here yes. and get on that flight on Sunday. But I also turned to my wife because at the time, my daughter was, you know, drinking formula and stuff like that. And, um, and she didn't want to drink formula. So we didn't have the food that we normally have for her. We didn't have like the de- the device that we used to like heat up the milk. We didn't have anything because it was just like, we're going to go for a day and come back. And I turned to my wife and I said, I'm a bad father. Like this was a terrible decision that I, I like made. I learned from the doing story. this. Yeah. Like I was like, this is one of the most irresponsible things that I have done is bring an infant along with us on this thing. And in the middle of that, then I had to also record like an an NFL draft special because it was like the week before the draft. It was just moral of the story. I will never forget the fact that I was forced to miss the Ichiro 3000th hit and I went to great lengths to not miss another one. Enjoy Detroit. Would you go to Little Caesars? I actually did. Go, so like Little Caesars is big there. I don't know oh. if you've been to Detroit. It's like the That's home amazing. of Little Caesars. The Little Caesars World Headquarters is there. It's like this massive building with a Little it's, Caesars logo on it. I think of. It's what I think of in Detroit. No, I, I didn't actually eat Little Caesars there, but I did eat Detroit style pizza there, which I figured out was a style pizza. And then I came back and found out that Little Caesars sells Detroit style pizza. Of course. Not as good as actual Ooh. Detroit style pizza, I will say. Well, that's Detroit style pizza. It's like a pan pizza that's like square. It's like it's pretty good though. Liked it. Is it like thick? I think I know what you're talking about. It's kind of thick, yeah. And then they have like a good sauce you can dip it in. It was like really good. Also, Jeremy, I don't know. Have you ever been to Detroit? I haven't. I would love to. Chris, have you been to Detroit? Would you love to? Actually, that's not true. I've been to the Detroit airport because I flew in there to then drive to Ann Arbor, Michigan. When you drive into Detroit from the airport, there's this story, massive Jeremy. tire that's like 40 feet tall. It's like one of the like world's largest like side of the road things. It's a giant tire because it's like the Motor City. There's all of like, the car, you know, coming and all that Motor stuff City. there. That's right. One of the cool things about Detroit downtown, if you're a sports fan, everything is right next to each other. So then you have you have like Ford oh, Field, right. you have Comerica or whatever it's called now. I don't think it's called Comerica anymore. And then like you walk across like a bridge and then you have like the basketball slash hockey arena. Like everything is right there. It's kind of cool. Anyway, what are we talking it about? Is, it is Comerica Mount Rushmore. Still. still Comerica. That is what we were going to do. Uh, nah, in, I, don't, in, I, I, I guess it's too many. I got like six. I put six on there. Let me guess however many you need to put on your Mount Rushmore. Before we do that, uh, let me say that in the time that we've been recording this podcast, the Marlins have lost their game uh, to the Milwaukee Brewers four to two. The Marlins are now 75 and 72. Rank your coworkers, Jeremy. Rod Allen, Craig Minervini, Paul Severino, Tommy Hutton. They're three games over 500 and probably at the time you're listening to this, a game or a game and a half out of the final wild card spot. So we are going to do our Marlins, 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 Mount Rushmore's. Ooh, Gabby Sanchez. I didn't mention Gabby Sanchez yet. We are going to do our Marlins Mount Rushmore's here. Uh, and this was a Chris Cody idea. And then um, before we both headed home from the office that we were at about an hour before recording this, he said, I brought this up and I didn't think of anybody. And now he says he has <laughs> six people for his Marlins Mount Rushmore. You so guys Chris, want to draft, guys? That Ooh, I like fun. that. I like that. So then we can't have the same so ones. Then and then it's 12. All right. That sounds so good. Wait. Are we going around? Well, Chris has six, so it'd be fourteen. No, no, we'll do four. We'll do four each. I want to do twelve people. Eight, six, yeah, four, we'll yeah. do. We'll do. Yeah, we'll do. We each get four. Okay. It'll be twelve total people. 
Mount Rushmore um, draft. And we'll like do this. a we'll do a, a a serpentine draft. So we'll go back and forth in a snake draft, even though it's three people. Okay. So we Chris, can just go in a circle. I don't. We don't need you to go, go in back a circle. And forth. All right. If let's you want. Then, I mean, but I don't then care. the person who goes first always gets the yeah, first. Yeah, gets a major advantage. Oh, okay. Whatever. Then the person who going seconds always in the middle. Guys, Not it doesn't sure. matter. This isn't a real draft. <laughs> All We're right. Put these on a poll, and people can vote on who has the best. Oh, okay. Board. Yeah. Well, do, broad, do broadcasters count? Sure. Get creative. Oh, wow. All right. All let's right, do Jeremy, our, our. So we're gonna pick Rod Allen, or are you gonna pick uh, <laughs> Marlins Paul Mount Marlins Mount Rushmore? Uh, all right. Well, like it'll be Chris, Billy, and then me. David Sampson. Did you okay. notice that Jeremy gave himself the the last one so he could get first next round? Yes. Yeah, not I thought we were going. I thought we were going in a circle. No, no, we're doing a snake. I'm scared. Now I'm going first all of a sudden. God, I'm I'm, I'm literally sweating. All right. um, I don't want to go first. I'm kidding. I'm going to take with the first pick in one of the saddest drafts in the history of drafting. Not sad. How dare you? How There's dare 12 you? great players on this list. I, I am otherwise. going to take, man, with the first pick. I'm really, I'm, 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 I'm scared right now. I'm scared. Mm. I'm going to take with the first pick. You're going to run out of time. Right Gary Sheffield. Gary, oh, Gary Sheffield. Sheffield. Wow. Surprising. That is a surprising first pick. I'm gonna I'm gonna write these down. All it right. just the, the stance. It's an iconic stance. When I think of that '97 team, that was mm -hmm. he was the, he was he was just it. He was the it guy on that team. I get mm. it completely. Billy. I'm going to take Giancarlo Stanton. Oh, Ooh, another woof, surprise. Woof. The, te the team's only MVP. If I I'm making it. a Mount Rushmore, he would be on that as the team's only MVP. Mount, Mount Rushmore's of bad hitters. That it is had. so funny. The, 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 so the three it's of us. 59 home runs. Ah, he stinks. <laughs> okay. I, there is a very funny dynamic that exists that is the, the three of us, and particularly Chris and I, talking about Giancarlo Stanton hitting in general. But there's another funny dynamic, which is that I've been thinking of this since I left the office. Have thought of a whole bunch of players. Stanton didn't even come to mind, yeah. which is That's so fine. weird, That's so fine. strange. Considering Stop stalling, right. make your He's pick. He's the only Stop. MVP. <laughs> All right, Stop fine. Stalling. All right, so my first pick is going to be Miguel Cabrera. Okay. Um, Why did I not take Miguel Cabrera? Yeah, it was really a not a great move by you. Yeah, I didn't even think of him. I mean, I, I thought of him earlier, but in this one, when right. I was freaking out, like I, he, I would have taken him. He's my yeah. favorite Marlin of all time. Yeah, I'm he's like, the what best. Apparently Marlin. not. He's the best. Yeah, Marlin. he's gonna be. Yeah, um, he's the greatest. He's uh, <sighs> the greatest right-handed hitter I've ever seen, and probably ever will see. Yeah. Um, I'm so mad at myself. So, so Miguel Cabrera up again. Miguel Cabrera's the first pick. All right. So with my second pick, um, yeah, I'll go. I'll go this direction. I'll go Josh Beckett. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm taking Beckett simply for Game Six of the the World Series. Um, he was such a a dominant force, um, incredible playoff performer, helped to get the team there. And while there are other pitchers that could have gone, know who Josh space, Beckett is. People hey know man, who Josh Beckett is. Just, all right, fine, fine. You go ahead. I'm trying I'm to make so this draft entertaining, but we can just draw 12 names, okay? <laughs> this happens on Mystery Crate. I try to give some explanation for my picks. I, hey, man, this all started. I listened to All Fantasy Everything, and because of that podcast, I love the idea of a draft of anything, but they explain their picks. They're the originals, so I'm just sitting here thinking, all right, I'll explain my pick, but no, mm. that's fine. We don't need to give any sort of feeling toward Josh Beckett. You all right, ahead, I'm up. Please. Sandy Alcantara, because he's the team's only Cy Young. God, I don't even want to play this collecting anymore. The hardware. I don't yep. want to play anymore because of how mad at myself I am. Who are you taking after Sheffield? Cabrera. Darren Dalton. <laughs> <laughs> that is just not even funny. Like Dennis Sheffield Cook? is legit a good candidate. Like not he's not ahead. Of, I know. He's not ahead of Miguel on, Cabrera. Man. Billy, you have the Stan is like twelfth. Yeah, but he's MVP. he is collecting hardware. Billy's MVP collecting and Cy hardware. Young. He's Luis Castillo. I'm taking oh, Luis Castillo. That's and good. then I get another pick, right? Yeah, you do. Yeah. I'm so mad at myself. My team would be so good right now with Miguel Cabrera and, and Louis. That would yeah, be like... you would be you would be a lot better than you are right now. Yeah. And well, not that play. by the way, not I'm... that Sheffield shouldn't be on this list. Sheffield should be on this yeah, list. Yeah, no. It was just it, it's a value thing. No, First I know. Yeah. I just I just forgot about Miguel Cabrera. Yeah. Um I get it. All right, so it's my pick now. Uh 
Brad Penny, Brad Penny. See, this is one of those things. I'm going to take a pick just because I think it'll help me in the voting. I think sure, people Brad think Penny. people associate this guy with the Marlins. He's not for me like an all-time great player, but he's uh -huh. just a moment in team Brad history. Penny. I'm going to go Penny. with the D train. Don Ooh, okay. okay. I Jose think Fernandez. A... Yes. Thank you. Yep. See, Billy's that... just like hard. Like he it is hardware. Interesting. No, this oh, he is never won a Cy Young. I thought he won a Cy Young. Hmm. No, but oh, see, boy. this is... he won a Rookie of the Year. Um, yeah, there you go. You are, yeah. You have a you have a rookie of the year, a Cy Young, and an MVP. So you're in pretty good shape. Um, I will say, I, there, the interesting dynamic that's shaken out with you is you, you've got all modern players. Yeah. Right? You don't have any yeah. Florida Marlins. You have all Miami Marlins thus far. No, he has Gary no, Sheffield. Billy. No, oh, me? You, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, it's a thing yeah. that has happened. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a modernization of your team, which. I think is interesting considering your longtime fandom from the very beginning of the franchise. Well, I mean, I could. Oh, we only have four people that we have Juan to pick. Pierre. And Juan then... Pierre is my next pick. Juan Pierre okay. is my next pick. That's who I'm going with. That's your um, third pick, right? So now you're next. Yeah, that's and my final pick. pick. Yeah, um, it's coming. I, I up. just want to say, JP, that he's my favorite Marlon of all time. Really? Um, I just had to put that out there for everybody. Um, yeah. And now, who do I want as my last pick on the Marlins Mount Rushmore? I'm stalling. Um, Jacob stalling. Jacob stalling. Wow. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Lock it in. Pick. All right, hold on. All right. That, I'm, I'm writing I'm, that one down. I'm Jacob stalling. I'm trying to think. Hold on a moment. Hold on <laughs> just a pick, moment. Wow. I have I thought, one. I, thought I have one. Um, Who's on your team? You have Miguel Cabrera, Juan Pierre, and who was the other one? And I have Beckett. Josh Beckett. Got it's it. Pretty yeah, strong. I don't. My my thing is, is I don't want to make it. Why'd you take Josh Beckett? Why did I take World Josh Beckett? Because yeah. he was dominant. I was joking because I cut you off the last time you explained oh, it. Okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm just, I don't want to do the, I just don't want to do only 03, but I might have to go with my heart here. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't take my guy. I'm going to take Pudge Rodriguez. Wow, oh, Pudge. Wow. I know it's only one season, but I believe his value uh, was felt, and he has, he is on the receiving end of Jeff Conine's greatest play as a Marlin, which is the throw home uh, and the collision at home plate. And that's like an all-time moment. Um, and so, yeah, I've just built out the 2003 team. I have yeah. Miguel Cabrera, Josh Beckett, JP. and Can we do Puck. six each? Because Chris Can wanted we six. six. Can we do six? Yeah, because sure. I'm having Jamie. fun. Sure, why not? Let's okay, do it. I take... I take uh, it's my well, turn. Oh, wait, I thought... Oh, no, it's your no, turn. No, it's Billy's turn. turn. All right, this is going to be very, very not widely... Controversial. Received well, yeah, and Chris Cody's gonna hate it. And he's gonna call me a dumb dumb. Hanley Ramirez. No, that's a good one. That's Batting good champion. One. I, I mean, I'll tell you this. I was between him and Pudge. Those were the two really? guys that I was between. Yeah, because he was great, man. Like I would argue, know, he's on the Mount Rushmore of most talented players the Marlins have. Yeah, had. That's, that's where sure. I would put him. Like that's for sure. Like he, I, I think that's a fair pick. I, I, I think he, I, I, I agree. I have some issues with it, Billy, but I will. Batting champion. I'm not gonna totally rip it. I, I, it's, it's. I get you got it. a necklace and everything. <laughs> I am going with. It's my turn, hey, right? Back to back yeah. picks for you, Chris. Back to back for you because oh, we're doing one. six here. Okay. This is insane. This is ended this... up being a really long podcast. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna sorry. go. No, oh, I'm happy about it. Derek Lee, and Mike Lowell. Oh, whoa, boy, Derek Lee. I'll tell I love you, Derek Lee. That's a Shout personal out to Derek one for Lee, me. But Derek that's a Lee, personal one for me. Derek Lee also, uh, vastly underrated baseball player. Dude, yeah, Derek Lee to me is more Marlin than Giancarlo Stanton. Yeah, but I know that's a nostalgia play. That's all terrible, a nostalgia. You just take. love that team. Terrible. Take. I, I get. I get what you're feeling. Derek Lee's a Derek better Lee's, hitter. Derek Lee's more Cub than Marlin. Mm, his best season was as a Cub. That did hurt mm -hmm. when he went to the Cubs. Yeah, he was really. He good. had a 40 home run season. As he a almost Cub, won the I MVP. Think. Yeah. Yeah. No He's one could amazing. hit a double like Derek oh. Lee, and mm. nobody, nobody could scoop at first like Derek oh. Lee. Oh. Best. Hmm. And no one could uh, look at a fastball down the middle like Giancarlo Stanton. And swing at a slider low and away. Uh, Billy. MVP. MVP. No, Billy. hit 59 home runs for him. <laughs> Your team. pick. I'm going to take Benito Santiago. Now, I know that's a, I know that's a uh, nostalgia my first, for you. First favorite, favorite baseball favorite. player. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, that's why I asked if we could do six just so I could take him because I feel so bad not taking him. We could have mentioned yeah. Noel Eyes because now you've put me in a precarious spot where I have to take two more and I don't know what to do here. Wow. Um, 
This is this you're closing on your draft here. I need I to go 97. I gotta go somewhere right. 97. Five I'm, and I'm six trying six to think beyond. I'm trying to I'm balance trying to out. I'm trying to balance my team. Ooh, there's a. I actually got a guy. Hey, Cliff Floyd. Oh, you know who's one that need needs to be on this list? Luvon Hernandez. Hmm. Chris just what? left. He was tired of this. Go? Yeah, I think yeah. he was just like, I've got a guy. I'm really excited about it, and then I'm gonna leave. So you got um, Luvon Hernandez. I'm assuming Levon he'll Hernandez. join again. Yeah, I would think so. Um, I've got Levon Hernandez. That's a good one. He's a good. Well, he's a good one just simply because I didn't have any representation of the 2000 or the 1997 team. Yeah. But when I look now, and I'm trying to think of anybody beyond beyond the 97 and 03 teams who I think need individual recognition, and I've got some names. I've got some names that I can think of. Um, Chris is joining the Zoom again, so this was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Well, it's a lot harder because there are there are. Oh my God, Chris is on his this guys. My died. phone, my my laptop died. It's perfect. Yeah. It's perfect. Uh, we'll wrap this up. I took Levon Hernandez. Um, with that pick, <laughs> so good. I took Levon Hernandez. Uh, with the fifth pick. Oh, that's a good one. Just for nostalgia's sake, also Dan Ugla. Dan Ugla's a good one. His name is Dan Ugla. Yeah. Oh, I know who I want. For, I, I know who I want. Somebody who I should have taken. Oh, I know who, who I it? want for my last well, pick. Billy, 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 it's your pick. I'm not going to take your last pick. Don't worry. I'm going to take. Wow. So there's there's lots of big I successful I have, names out there. I think I have a couple of the names that you're probably thinking of at the top of my head. Chris now his phone's again. dead. Yeah. I really so hope this, I really hope his phone did die. Yeah, that would be great. Really so here so here are people that I'm not gonna pick that could be picked, and it doesn't matter because Chris can't hear it. He's Kevin back. Brown is still out there. Al Kevin Leiter Brown is, is still out there. Out yeah, there. Al Leiter's a big one. Mm-hmm. Brian Harvey's still out there. If we're going to go with individual season success, Armando Benitez is still out Ooh. there, but you wouldn't think about him. Carlos Delgado is still That's out there. That's one I also thought about. You, But here's the thing about him. He cannot be on a round for us more of Marlins. He was only on the Marlins for a season. That, well, like, I did that with Pudge, but they won the World Series. Yeah, so that's, a little that's different. true. Yeah, it's a little Mike different. Mike Piazza is still out there, but he was a <laughs> Marlin for like six games or something. No, There's no, a clear no, omission no. here. I got a good pick. I hope it's someone we said already. Me oh too. shit, Billy! Uh, you know who I'm gonna take? This is another <sighs> because this is another modern one. So I well modernish because this is 2003. Well, I guess that's 20 years ago now. That's not that modern. You know who I'm gonna take? This is a play from my heart, Lenny Harris. Oh god! Oh, I swear, Lenny Harris! I swear, Lenny Harris is one of the ones I was thinking of. I All time. That's so good. I'm so yeah. glad that you chose Letty Harris. So I feel Harris. like Wes Helms should be in that slot. Oh, please oh, get him wow. Is that who, is you that who you're taking? No, that's not who I'm taking. I'm going to take Moises Alou. Tim Spoonie oh, Barker. Oh, Moises, Moises is a Alou. great one. Yeah, Especially he's one. because he's on, he's on, he, he is partially responsible for two World Series for the Marlins. That's I hate right. my first pick, but I like my team, guys. Yes, yeah, so you want to read that back? Your let's, first re pick, let's read that back. Let's read that back. Chris Cody drafted. For his Mount Rushmore of Marlins that inexplicably has six Marlins on it. Yeah. Gary Sheffield, Luis Castillo, Dontrell Willis, Derek Lee, Mike Lowell, and Moise Salou. Oh, that's a good team. That is a good team. You Billy... picked like, like a year, basically, and plus Moise Salou. That's right. Well, I also did that. Billy drafted Giancarlo Stanton, Sandy Alcantara, MVP. Jose Sayon. Fernandez, Hanley Ramirez, Batting Benito title. Santiago, and Lenny Harris. That's right. Can we count? Can we count all the World Series titles on our teams with the Marlins? Yes. And then I drafted. Well, thank you. She Miguel goes, Cabrera, yes. Josh Beckett, Juan Pierre, Ivan Pudge Rodriguez, Levon Hernandez, and Dan Ugla. Hmm. We left a, a, a quite a few on the board that were potential um, great names here that were mentioned: Kevin Brown and Al Leiter, as Billy brought up. Uh, may I? throw into the mix Alfredo Omezaga, Emilio Bonifacio, no. uh, as examples of players that just nostalgically, I'm with Chris. No. I love saying <laughs> their names. All right, no, I can't. Perfect. Good. Cameron Glad. Mabin, two-time Marlin. Mabin. Andrew Miller. Uh, guys, this was a blast. Thank you both for joining me. This ended Adania up Cheveria. way longer than I thought it would. Um, and I'm grateful that you guys took the time. So thank you for, for joining me today on this episode of Miami Mike Up. Wait, what's one thing outside of your job that's made you happy? Yeah, you didn't tell us. bring you joy. Outside yeah. of my job that's brought me joy. Well, have I spent any hours not All right, bye. working? <laughs>